Hey folks, how's it going? I've been playing this thing a little bit more. I've done another couple of runs because I managed to get most of the stuff from the shop already. I do realize bashing my head against the Safia plus Hangman stage for three hours straight was not the best of things. <laughs> they just don't die. <laughs> no matter what you try, they just don't go down. <laughs> Seriously, 23,000 HP. 60% damage reduction to everything? Who the hell thought this was a good idea? Once I quit that, I went back to try the other stages. I managed two more clears on difficulty 5, and both times these stages were extremely easy. Let's go over the various stages you can get, as well as the buffs that you can get through them, because there were a couple of them that helped tremendously. Started with some random buffs, started trying to go for damage, but going for damage is definitely not the way to go. You want to go for survival, you want to go for as much survival as possible, because once you get to the fifth stage, your damage is basically nullified. The only thing that's going to be able to keep you alive is high damage reduction, and there's one really, really nice buff that helps with that. A 70% damage reduction when the enemies are both ignited and poisoned. I managed to get that one on the Dandelion stage, and again, it was so, so helpful. Sadly, you cannot reroll this. Really wish there was one way to reroll this. A cooldown reduction of all skills by one turn. This one might be really nice for Samantha. Should let her heal every single turn. When it's not the character turns, recovers three energy, reduces skill cooldown by two turns. Might want to pick this one for Safia, but I'm not sure if I'll be using Safia until the end. Physical shields we don't have, and then another heal. We already have one. We don't need extra cooldown reductions. Maximum range is increased by three. Too many offensive things, not enough defensive ones. I guess we're going with this range thing one. Uh, we have a nice boulder lined up on four units. Would be a waste not to hit this. Character can act again after dealing critical damage. Cannot stack, tweet on cooldown. Yeah, sadly nothing defensive. But I do think the act again might actually be the best one. Now to the one confusing thing. Is active on the enemy. Physical damage immunity nullifies the physical damage received reduction by 60% in the final stage. Most of our units deal physical damage, so we should be picking this one, right? But it's still here, active on the enemy, reduces physical damage received by 60%, and only the piercing one still has the buff in here. So either this is not displayed correctly, or it's worded very, very poorly. Oh, that's a new one. I'm sorry, what? 113,000, 7,000 attack, physical damage immunity, pierce damage immunity, reduces magical damage by 60%, definitely active, but does this mean that these two are not? And if these two are not, why? Because I only pick the physical damage from the buffs. Still, if you can still deal pierce damage and damage over time, that's going to be great. Oh, the wolves are summoned on top of my own units. Let's start with the damage over time. I'll get everyone as close to Mitha as humanly possible. Burn and damage reduction. Tank, and we should be fine for this turn plus the next one. Oh god. Wait, can you really spawn wolves every single turn? Isn't that a bit too much? Yeah, no, we still go on Lupercar. Hey, okay, still on Lupercar? <laughs> it's getting pretty low. Oh, cool, we actually get Sacred Sanctuary every turn. That's one hell of a cooldown reduction. I guess the um, single target heals are also being counted for this cooldown reduction. Let's give her immunity. She's going to jump everywhere now. <laughs> I 
Okay, thankfully the wolves also have very little HP. They die really, really easily. <laughs> yeah, one spawn per turn. <laughs> That's a lot of wolves. She is a little bit far from Mefa, maybe. If anyone decides to attack her. As for you, uh, you're going to explode soon. percent always on the big wolf 17 from the counter big boss is done and the little wolves thankfully don't have ice stats so they should be falling relatively easily i think they might actually be all dead to damage over time finally someone hits her 30 minutes this was easy as hell. And with this, I think there's four or five uh, different tier fives. Don't mind me. I will be picking up a couple of these. Uh, mostly because even if it's 120, once you're done with everything, you can buy all the powder you want, all the experience you want, and all the Elysium coins you want. There's no limit to this. No. Let's do another run, see if we can get back some of the harder ones. When defeating an enemy, recovers 50% of HP, increases crit rate and crit damage. This is alright. He says crit rate ignores defense. This is also pretty nice. This one plus some range buff might be nice, especially for Afia, Barrow, and the HM Assassin. 60% more damage when having 6 or more buffs. And this one does not refresh. Kind of a waste of a slot and increase the triggering count of alert, which again, we don't have. Best one here is going to be the 60% more damage, but again, damage is not the issue. Character takes 70% less damage if the attacker has Scorch and Infection. This one, additional alert, we don't care, skills dealing fire AoE damage, change into burning. When attacking enemies inflicted by Scorch, increases crit rate and damage. They're basically setting us up to work with Barrel, Damage is dealt out of the character turns, increases crit rate by 100%, ignores defense. Let's go with the um, AoE damage into burning. As for the last one, once again, most of our damage is physical. We might pick the pierce damage removed if you want to go for damage over time. And we have burning. Let's see what happens if this swaps. Let's get the pierce damage immunity. Okay, now it still lists all three, but this one has the debuff. So, what I want to do here is start from these two units. The moment the big threat is gone, and move on to the rest. Meanwhile, they're going to come down over on this side, and we can probably meet them over here. You know what? I think we can just start like this. Start getting the cooldowns down for these skills as well. The more DOT effects we can put down, the better. Okay, she's finally woken up. We can come here. Rock that one and run. Same goes for you. 12% damage on her. Well, with all the damage reduction of the case. And now she's basically no threat. She's burning. She's got three stacks of infection. And that's a 70% damage reduction from her. Scorch. And this one is no issue either. That zero damage. These are going to be a bit more of an issue, but they will be burning, they will be infected very, very soon. The counters from Safia are dealing more damage than her. There's the explosion too. So we come back and more damage over time. The Elaman Assassin here I cannot reach.
but yes, I fear it's basically gone as well. And she no longer does any damage. A standby, let's see if you can burn and infect you at the same time. Fantastic. Sadly, the weapon is still refinement 1, so the chances for the burn is only 50%. Light him up. There's Safia Gun. Okay, cool, another win. All for one buff. And I'm pretty sure if I were to meet the Hangman stage again, I could still do it. So I'm going to keep on trying. We'll see what's going to happen in the next few days. In the meantime, that's going to be it for me for the moment. Good luck getting the buffs that you actually need. And see you guys around soon. Ciao! Cause he,